United Kids and welcome to another episode of United Kids Online and to our first time visitors we all want to extend a great hello hi and a tight hug give yourself a hug yes and squeeze yourself imagine that that hug comes from all of us as your new United friends today boys and girls we will be starting a new series just like we announced last week and the series is called equally loved we will be learning about how God loves all of us equally no matter how different we are for us to understand just how God does this in this series for each episode we will be asking ourselves a big question and in that big question we will be exploring all the different ways in which God is able to love us all equally even though we are different and the question is going to be answered through a big idea but the big idea will only be told at the end of the lesson so you have to stay tuned and stay focused to know what the big idea is so that you know the answer to the big question of course and this week's big question is does God see all people equally? Now, it's time for us to first get into worship, of course, before we get into today's story. Now, I hope that you are ready and that you're excited as you all now stand and celebrate God by praising and worshiping Him together. Staring into your eyes makes my heart Suddenly brought to life when I met you Reaching beyond the skies Running deep, stretching wide Perfect love realized Here with you Come on now Never stop this for real You will never let go Never let go Oh, it's more than just words Love beyond my Control, I love control. What's up? This is real love. This is real love. Sing this is real love. This is real love.
Boys and girls, it's important to believe that even though we are all different, God loves us all the same. In fact, the very things that make us different, God created out of love. We read this in Psalms 139 verse 13 to 14. King David wrote this about how God created him. You made my whole being. You formed me in my mother's body. And I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful. And I know this very well. Just like King David, God made our whole beings, including all the different things which make us different from one another. And God loves us just the way we are. So just like King David, let's praise God for how fearfully and wonderfully He made us.
our values in a different way by watching a video that tells us more about one of our values. To decide which value we're going to learn about today, I'm going to pick a value at random from this box. And whichever value comes out is the value that we'll recap for today. Remember that we have four values and whatever comes out of this box is one of the four values. Spiritual through prayer. Now let's let the video tell us more about prayer. God's story. Prayer. So part of God's story is about prayer. And it goes like this. Prayer is what we call a conversation we have with God. That means even though God created the entire universe and has power over all things, He wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to know Him. That's pretty amazing. We can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. But let's look at four examples of different ways we can pray. One way to pray is to praise God. That's when we tell God what we love about Him. Like a guy named Jehoshaphat. He was king of God's family when some big-time armies declared war on them. Jehoshaphat was terrified, so he talked to God about it. He said, God, you are the mighty ruler of all things. We don't know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. King Jehoshaphat believed God could help them. So as he went into battle, he sent people ahead of his army to praise God. They said, give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Yep, that means he thanked God before he won the war. And when God heard his praise, he caused those big armies to attack each other. Jehoshaphat didn't even have to fight. A second way to pray is to repent. See, we all mess up, which means we turn away from God. When we repent, we ask him to forgive us and we turn back to him. One time, another king named David made a big mistake. He took something that wasn't his. Then David tried to cover it up, which turned it into an even bigger mess. When David's good friend Nathan told him he disobeyed God, David repented. He said, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Mercy is when someone gets forgiveness they don't deserve. And guess what? God will always forgive us when we repent. Of course, anyone can pray to God, not just kings. One woman named Hannah reminds us of a third way we can pray. We can ask God for something. Now, Hannah really wanted to have a baby, and she told God that. But you know what was crazy about her prayer? Even though she really wanted a baby, she said, God, if you give me a son, then I will give him back to you. Kids, isn't that unusual? To ask for something you want, then give it back? Well, a year later, Hannah had a son, and she did exactly what she promised. She gave her son back to God by sending him to live with a priest named Eli and do God's work. And Samuel just so happens to be a great example of a fourth way we can pray. Like any good conversation, we shouldn't do all the talking. We should listen, too. That's because God is in control, and we've got to yield or give in to what He wants. We yield when we listen to what God says and obey Him, no matter what we want. One night, God called Samuel's name three times. When Samuel finally realized God wanted to talk to him, he said, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel stopped to listen, and God told him things. When Samuel obeyed what God told him, God kept talking to him. And when we pray, when we praise, when we repent, when we ask, and when we yield, we remember that he's the one in charge and that we get to talk to him because we're loved by him. And that's some of what the Bible says about prayer. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is also listening to God. There are a lot of ways to pray. Jehoshaphat praised God. David repented. Hannah asked God for what she really, really wanted. Samuel listened. And they all wanted what God wanted more than what they wanted. Prayer reminds us that God is in control. He loves us and wants to be close to us. And that's a part of God's story.
Wow, I had no idea we could pray for so many reasons. I can't wait to get started. But remember to join us next week when we learn about another one of our values. But now let's get to the story and let's close our eyes and open our hearts and ask God to help us learn all that he wants us to learn today. Lord Jesus, thank you for the day that you've given us and please help us to open our ears and our hearts to what you want us to learn today. Boys and girls, we're going to start off by playing a game together. In this game, a picture will pop up, actually two pictures. And those pictures will look like they are identical, but they're not really identical. Your job or your objective in the game is to find all the differences in the pictures. Once you've found all the differences, then you get... Let me think. However many points you want, you get all the points in the world. <laughs> so the point of this game is for us to see how sometimes things may look like they're the same, but they're different. Because today we're learning about differences, right? And how God has made us different, but has loved us all the same, equally. It's a bit tricky, right? But let's see. Let's start off with this game before we get into the rest of the lesson as we deepen our understanding in how God loves us equally even though we are different. Was, boys and girls i'm sure you spotted a lot of differences right all right so now it's time for us to get into our memory verse are you ready are you prepared are you alert okay great let's go hey girls and boys let's go through today's memory verse it's the one we did during worship psalm 139 verse 14. first i'm going to read it and then we can do the movements together I praise you because you made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful. I know this very well. Let's do it together. Psalm 139 I praise you because you have made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful and I know this very well. Let's do it again. Ready? Great, let's go. Psalm 139 I praise you because you have made me in an amazing and wonderful way. What you have done is wonderful and I know this very well. Wow, girls and boys, it makes me so happy to know how amazing and wonderfully God made us, even though each and every one of us are different. Right now, we're going to watch a video about how God created mankind. It's a story about Adam and Eve and how he made us different, but equal. Stories of the Bible. 
Adam and Eve. God made the whole world and everything in it. He made the sun and the stars in the sky. He made the fish in the sea and the animals that walk on land. He made every tree and flower. God also made man. Hurry! God said, let us make man to be like us. They will reign over all the animals and fish of the world. So God created man and woman. Hi! Oh, hi! The first man was named Adam. That's me! And the first woman was called Eve. That's me! Then God blessed them and gave Adam and Eve jobs to do. Let's do this! They were supposed to take care of all the animals that God had created, like the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Adam and Eve were also supposed to have children to fill the earth with more people. Then God looked over all he had made, and he saw that it was very good. Wow, boys and girls, wasn't that just a fun story? It's really good for us to recap on the story about Adam and Eve. We've learned it so many times now, but sometimes we need to go back to remind ourselves how God created us. Well, we could see from the Bible that God created Adam and Eve male and female. This means boy and girl. This shows us that God is the one who created our differences. God made us different. And after God created everything, including Adam and Eve, He always said the words that it is good. Everything God created was good, which means that our differences, which God has created us in, are also good. So it's good that you're a girl, or that I'm a girl, and that you're a boy, and nothing about our differences is bad. And because God created Adam and Eve as his children, he loves them, right? Just like he loves you and I. So even all these differences, God loves them. He loves what makes us different, which is why we ought to also love ourselves even for our differences. Now, even though God created us differently, there is some similarity that he has given us. And that is in how he created us all in his image. The Bible told us that God created Adam and Eve male and female, but in God's image, he created the both of them. So he didn't just create Adam in his image and not Eve, or Eve in his image and not Adam. He created both of them in his image. All of us are created in God's image, regardless of our differences. Whether we're a girl or a boy, not even where we come from changes the fact that God has made us in his image. But now, what is this image that God has created us in? Well, the Bible also tells us that God is love. So when we express love, but not any kind of love, God's love, you know, God's love that is patient, that is kind, that is always thinking about others by being selfless, that kind of love. When we express that godly love, we express God's image in and through our lives. From the story about Adam and Eve, we can also see how God created them male and female, created them in his image, and then gave them jobs to do. God gave Adam and Eve jobs to do, which we can also call purpose. So he gave them purpose by assigning them duties to take care of the garden and all the living animals in the garden. But they also had to take care of themselves and each other. Now God being God, always knew what work he would need Adam and Eve to fulfill in the garden. And the way he created them was very smart. He knew what to give Eve and what to give Adam that will help each other in working in the garden, fulfilling the purpose that God has given them. The same applies to us in life as well. We are all different, but created in the same image of God. And we all are called to the same purpose that God has given us as human beings to take care of one another, to love one another, and to love God in so doing as well. And we can use our differences to help each other in doing and fulfilling this purpose. So whatever makes you different is special and is important in God's eyes because God can use it to help you help others as we all fulfill the purpose that He has given us. So boys and girls, what we have learned today is that God loves how unique and different we are because He made us that way. 
which means it doesn't matter where you come from, whether you're a girl or a boy, if you have long or short or curly or straight hair, no matter what makes you different, God loves you and your differences. Which brings us to our big idea that we are all equal in God's eyes because He made us in His image. Now boys and girls, let us take this with us and apply it into our lives in how we treat ourselves and how we treat others as well. We need to see people as representatives and reflections of God's image even if they are different from us and we need to see ourselves in the same way as well. This way we will help one another to fulfill the job and the great purpose that God has given all of us as human beings and as followers of Jesus. We will see you next week for another fun episode where we will learn more and more about how much God loves us all equally.